What's up, everybody? Dr. Maxfield. I'm Dr. Shah. Today, we're going to be talking about something that I get questions about all the time. And this is the question I get from like a lot of friends, a lot of family. Uh, a lot of people see, you know, what I'm doing on social media and they reach out for skincare advice. But the ones that always end up in my text messages is this question. How do I treat dark circles? And my response always is what? It's complicated. It's complicated, very difficult to treat. Not all dark circles are created equally. Not everyone is the same. They're caused by different things. A lot of people think their dark circles are created by hyperpigmentation, but there are multiple reasons for dark circles. Today, we're gonna to be breaking down what causes dark circles, how to treat dark circles. Here we go. Here we go. Dark circles under the eyes. Uh, so again, I think the most common misconception is that everyone thinks this is really like a skin first problem. It's a problem with skin. What skin products can I use? But there's a lot of different things that cause it. Reoccurring theme, the what's going on, the why we do things is super important to us. And we're very deliberate in trying to make sure you know what exactly is going on so you can pick treatments to target the actual cause. So there are three things that are gonna commonly cause these dark circles under the eyes. One is gonna be shadowing, so that's not gonna be true hyperpigmentation, but the effect of shadowing creating hyperpigmentation appearance. The next thing is thin eyelid skin giving the prominence to your underlying skin structures that can appear dark. And then the third thing is true hyperpigmentation, which is what I think everybody thinks they have, and that's gonna be either increased melanin production and rarely hemosiderin, which is a different color pigment, but ultimately hyperpigmentation would be the one that everyone thinks they have and that's the one that your creams mostly target we're going to talk about what causes all of these and how to treat them so first shadowing what what causes shadowing so shadowing the easiest thing to think about is even just the shadow coming from the orbital rim the bony structure here to just cast a shadow underneath the eye right so that that could just be your lighting if you have like you know top lighting overhang lighting it can create the appearance of, of dark circles and that's not going to be true and some people just have a prominent area no matter what you do the lighting is going to cause that to be more prominent and if you take photos you want your your camera your light to be facing you so that you don't have that dark appearance so the other thing uh, that causes shadowing is tear trough depression and some people are just born with deeper tear troughs these areas underneath here being deep create a shadowing effect in this area and this with time also uh, with age you can lose that uh, periorbital fat pad and they can cause those depressions to get deeper um, and you can also just get laxity of the tissue with time that can also create this appearance of dark circles so that's the shadowing um, that creates this darkened appearance the only thing that you can do to kind of fill in those deep tear troughs is what uh, really procedurally based uh, treatment is the only and really the only real effective thing you can do to offset the shadowing component which unfortunately is a major contributor to dark circles right and so basically you could do filler um, at, at the office with the dermatologist where they inject dermal fillers underneath the eyes and it will kind of pop this out and you almost have an immediate benefit uh, with your dark circles that's created by shadowing or you could do fat transfer things like that where you're going to actually change the structure uh, because the problem is structural not due to pigment and so you need to first identify that and then you can know what is going to be the most effective and cost effective treatment for you also just like we were saying like we shoot these videos super early in the morning and a lot of times i have dark circles because i actually get um basically eye bags and the eye bags um, also can create a shadowing appearance as well even though it's not truly pigment um, it's that edema or swelling underneath the eyes that creates the idea of shadowing. And so uh, things that target uh, swelling, we'll do a whole other video on eye bags and how to treat them and, and all that. But just be aware that bags can also contribute to the appearance of dark circles. So not only do the shadowing and the bags accentuate that, but then we're talking about the thinness of the skin. So the thickness of the skin of the eyelid, uh, what, 0 0.05 millimeters, 0 0.5 millimeters, one of those two. It's the thinnest skin in the body. Yeah, so it depends on who you talk to, but mostly considered to be the skinnest, the thinnest skin on skin of thin, the thinnest, the thinnest skin on the body. Um, but ultimately, a lot of people will say like, you know, eye creams. You don't need eye creams. What's the difference between an eye cream and a face cream? Not, not entirely true because when we look at the skin underneath the microscope, we look under the eyelid skin. It, it actually has very distinct features. You can actually tell you're on eyelid skin when you look at it underneath yep. the microscope because of how thin it is, how how close the underlying structures are to it, and so the skin is different in this area. And things that I would put on my, the rest of my face, I would not put on my eyelids personally because I have very sensitive eyelids and you guys will hear all about my eyelids probably for the rest uh, of my career. So you guys will hear about the eyelids because I have very sensitive eyelids and this, this, thin, this skin, 
the skin is very thin. Um, so basically the, the thin skin causes what to appear underneath it. Okay, so underneath the eyelids, we have very prominent vasculature, whether it's just individually large dilated vessels or where it's just the fact we have blood vessels underneath, the thin, underneath this thin skin, that is kind of hard to say, <laughs> underneath, this, underneath this thin skin that causes a tint overlying it, or it's the underlying musculature. So we have an orbicularis oculi here, a muscle that's underlying and around our eyeball or our eye socket. And that reddish brown tinge of the muscle can also create a tangent, a tinge which creates shadowing or the appearance of shadowing or dark circles. We're having trouble with words today, huh? We are. Okay, so basically, um, so if you have prominent vessels, what can you do to decrease the appearance of these vessels? You can use caffeine-based creams that cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessels. So vasoconstriction of the blood vessels is gonna decrease their appearance at least temporarily while those caffeine creams are on. If you want to eliminate it permanently, then laser that targets blood vessels, uh, that's going to be something procedural, uh, but ultimately can ablate the vessel and, and cause that prominence to decrease. Um, so what can you do to help thicken up that collagen, maybe give yourself a little more cushion in between the skin and the underlying structures. We'll talk about this a lot, everybody talks about it all the time. It's vitamin A derivatives, retinoids. Retinoids, retinol, adapalene, tretinoin. <laughs> all pretty much sort of the same thing, vitamin A derivatives, but they will thicken the skin in the area and- Over a long period of time. But just like he said, uh, look, everybody's skin is different. The sensitivities of your skin are actually different in different areas. Even though let's say he and I have resistant skin or fairly resistant skin over like the cheeks, the nose, the jaw. Even for me, where I can use the eyelid skin because it's so thin and it is different, it's gonna be more sensitive. So using a vitamin A derivative in that area, be aware and be conscious that it could be more irritating than other areas you're applying. It to. So last, true hyperpigmentation. Uh, this is where you get increased pigment deposition in the skin and that can lead to a darkened appearance. A lot of people have this just genetically. You know, they'll see a lot in their family members that they just have darker skin around this area, which makes it even harder to treat. It could also be due to just people that have allergic contact dermatitis around the eyes. And so things that they get irritated around the eyes and that leads to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which a lot of times you can get allergies to your skincare products that can cause this. Allergy to your nail products, actually a very common cause of eyelid reactions and also just somebody with eczema, you know, that can lead to chronic inflammation that also leads to hyperpigmentation around the eyes. Other things that can cause it is just sun exposure with time, uh, you know, can lead to basically tanning of this area. And a lot of people neglect to put sunscreen on the areas around their eyes. And so the first thing that you can do for this is to use a tinted sunscreen, uh, tinted because they contain iron oxides that in addition to the titanium and zinc oxide ingredients are gonna also help block against visible light, which also protects further against hyperpigmentation and so if you use a tinted sunscreen every single day, uh, it's also gonna have a cosmetic camouflage um, to it by having a little bit of tint to it, but it also protects against that visible light. So that would be the first step to trying to treat the hyperpigmentation, true hyperpigmentation around the eyelids. Yeah, and then again, same thing. You know, we talk about, we'll talk in depth about just pigmentation changes, how to treat hyperpigmentation, but retinoids do help with that over time as well. Again, caveat, it's sensitive around the eye. And then of course, um, you know, medications that fade hyperpigmentation are gonna be very effective. Things like hydroquinone, but you don't really wanna use that longer than two months without really talking to a dermatologist because it can actually lead to permanent hyperpigmentation. So you really wanna be careful with hydroquinone. Other things like kojic acid, niacinamide, vitamin C, uh, tranexamic acid, uh, azelaic acid, alpha-arbutin. So these are all ingredients that you wanna look for in your skincare products that are gonna fade hyperpigmentation. And so, you know, even the CeraVe's uh, eye cream has niacinamide in it that has brightening properties. La Roche-Posay's um, eye cream has niacinamide in it, which has brightening properties. And then just using something like azelaic acid, which tends to be a gentle brightening agent um, and also good for acne and, and things like that. We summarize the three things that cause dark circles under the eyes, whether it's shadowing and structural, whether it's just visibility of the underlying structures, or whether it's actually skin directly causing it. Just be aware that there are multiple causes, a lot of contributing factors, and the treatments or behaviors that you're gonna do to augment these um, really need to offset whatever's causing the dark circles for you. That's it, look for the cause, look for the treatment, and we'll try to break it down super easy for you guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe. We'll be doing more videos like this and we really, really appreciate all of your support. Enjoy life, live life, have fun.